doesn't like a big bowl of macaroni and cheese? Mmm, thankful we had a snack. Growing up, one of my favorite meals that my grandmother would cook would be mac and cheese. And believe it or not, the other favorite dinner was cabbage. Can you believe that? But she would put a little sum sum in it, a little love that would always make me go back for more. Can I take you on a little journey if you would just invoke your sense of smell? It's any day of the week. My grandma's in the kitchen cooking. And just, if you can imagine, she's taking out some cornbread, scratch, not jiffy, and she puts just enough butter on top of it to uh, invoke that sense of smell. And then just before you know it, she takes the lid off of this boiling pot of collard greens and the whole entire kitchen invokes and steam and this smell, but wait for it. She does her last grease test, and in goes the chicken. Yes, fried chicken. On any given day, we would have this meal, and, and I could not wait and anticipate to have this meal together. But before we would sit down, she would also hide the dessert because my grandfather had this sweet tooth, and before he would eat dinner, she, he would always eat dessert. Can you imagine? that in today's society, only 40% of families sit down together twice or even three times a week to have a meal together. When just a generation ago, 80% of families would daily sit down and have meal together, meals together. William Doherty says that this family time of having meals together brings us closer together. It brings mothers and fathers or spouses together just to see how their day went. But it also, for families, tell children that my parents really care about me to sit down and have a meal together. Would you agree with me that in today's society that, that this endangered idea of mealtime is gone away? My grandmother, Big Mama, who we affectionately called her. She was the matriarch of our family. She's the one that shaped me. She's the one that gave me spiritual lessons. She's the one that taught me to be the person who I am. Big Mama, who we again affectionately called her, would always, as I say, intervene on my behalf. I was a strong-willed, strong-headed child, as my mother would agree with me today. And so I always had to have somebody to what I call intervene on my half for God, to go to God for, and Big Mama was that person. But even as a child, I loved to listen to the stories that Big Mama would tell at mealtime. I, I loved to hear her life lessons, her spiritual lessons that she would invoke upon us. So I would run home as a child, and, and I would get into my makeshift Star Trek spaceship in the kitchen, and I would listen to Big Mama tell stories, and I would ask her many questions about life, and, and she would share with me. Even as I got older, and yes, I put away the Star Trek spaceship as I got older, but I listened to the stories that she would tell. I listened to the life lessons that she would, it would tell us even at mealtime. Yes, mealtime was the culmination in my house of our day where we would all get together and we would all talk about our days, whether it was good or whether it was bad. You had to share. And even if you were a guest at our home, guess what? You had to share it as well. But Big Mama believed that mealtime was common ground that it was a time that you could share, it's a time that you could listen, it was a time that you could just share whatever was on your heart. It was common ground, common place. One of, the, one of my favorite stories that my grandmother taught me or she told was the time that she walked into our church's Sunday school uh, time and she told the superintendent, I am no longer teaching children. And at that time, she had taught children for about 15 years. She said, I want to teach adults. I, I want to talk to people that, you know, can talk back to me and I can have conversations with them. 
Well, that night she had a dream and she dreamed that she was in a large ocean and in the middle of the ocean there were children all around her of all nationalities grabbing, trying to, as they were drowning. And my grandmother said she began to reach out to all of the children, saving every last one of them until they were all safe on the shore. When she woke up, she said she was crying and, and exhausted, but it's something that triggered in her mind that day that when she got to church that Sunday, she just walked by the superintendent and says, I'm not leaving my babies. Well, as I listened to the story as a child, one of the things that first came to my mind was, wow, I'm glad Big Mama was a good swimmer. But then I thought about the message that Big Mama told that day, and she said, you are called and you're gifted for a purpose. Never ever lose that course that you're on. Never allow anybody to get you off course, even your own thoughts and your own self. She said, always stay the course and always listen. Never let anything get in your way. Big Mama, yes, even at meal times, will tell us and impart those things that were very important, those things that even today have been sewn into the fabric of who I am. She said always to have a strong worth ethic. If you don't have a job, she says, create a job. She says that if you have to it, make your life manageable, every day prioritize things so that at the end of the day, you can see what you've accomplished. She also says that life will sometimes deal you a very bad hand. So her solution was just get another deck. She also says that the choices that you make in life become, yes, your life experiences. Again, the choices that you make in life become your life experiences. Well, what do we do today at mealtime in our house? Well, I'm, I'm glad you have asked. Very good audience. I'm glad you asked. I have become the official cook in our family. Whether it's 10 of us, whether it's 20 of us, or even at our annual New Year's family day dinner, in which my grandparents started long time ago, where there's 50 plus people, we still eat together as a family. We still sit down and we share stories. We still sit down and share those things that are important to us, life wisdom, life lessons. And of course, we share the stories that Big Mama told us over and over and over and over again. And yes, we eat until our hearts are content and we eat until we have to unfasten our top button or even our belt loops. But one thing we do do is that we remember to share wisdom. We remember to share the life lessons. We listen to our elders that they impart into us wisdom, all centered around this thing called meal time. I remember the last time that Big Mom and I had a meal together. We were all alone and I cooked dinner and we sat down and we began to eat. She inquired, how are things going with you? How's your day? Are you following the journey? Are you following the things that you're gifted and called to do? She says, remember what I've taught you. Always remember to pray and always remember to read your Bible. Always remember to respect others. Always remember what you've been taught at the table. And yes, it was at the table that I, have, I was molded and shaped to be who I am today. So my challenge to you today is that if it's today, tomorrow, or weeks to come, I challenge you to sit down at the table to have meal, a meal together. I challenge you to sit down with your children or your significant other and have a meal together from scratch. I challenge you to have just some time, even with a stranger, that you would share wisdom and life lessons from your own life, from the choices that you've made that have now become your life experience. 
Today, I honor my grandmother, Big Mama, by saying thank you, Big Mama, for life lessons at the table. Thank you for the spiritual lessons, Big Mama, that you taught me at the table. Thank you, Big Mama, for everything that you showed me, the way you've molded me, that I've become the person who I am today. But most of all, Big Mama, besides the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that you've given me, thank you, Big Mama, for cornbread, collard greens, chicken, and cake. Thank you.